The Digital Photography Cafe show is brought to you by Focus Pyramid, the autofocus lens calibration tool for your camera. Welcome to the Digital Photography Cafe show. Join host Trevor Curran and Joseph Christina as they serve up the hottest photography news and commentary. Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. This is episode 201. I'm Joseph Christina here with my co-host Trevor Current. On last show, we celebrated our 200th episode with a huge photo gear giveaway and talked about where we started and where we're taking the show for 2016. If you haven't watched last week's show, I encourage you to do so. You can find it at digitalphotographycafe.com or our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash dphotocafe. Listen with the popular Stitcher, TuneIn, and Xbox music apps, or subscribe through iTunes or RSS. Hey, Joe, we're back. Merry Christmas, my friend. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Wow. Another year has come and gone. I know. I know. So fast. So fast. Seems like Very quick. just yesterday we were doing this year-end wrap-up show. I know, I know, I know. I can't believe it was 200 um, last, the last time we did the show. It was just amazing how that, how that all happened, you know, four and a half years later, and here we are, show 201. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's amazing. Know. So, um, yeah, that, that show ended up being just really, really big. Was, you know, someone, God, what did they win? $4,155 worth of photo gear. Um, that was pretty big. Yeah, I tell you what, the the show is big. The uh, the contest actually turned out to really be a huge success. Yeah, um, we yeah. had over five thousand entries in this right. contest, which was uh, which you know kind of blew me away. I mean, you know, you kind of hope to to get some big numbers. You know, I mean, you just sure. want to see that the interaction that people are listening and paying attention right. and and excited about the prize package, which is very obvious they were. So yeah, yeah really, really yeah. cool. Um, it was uh, all good stuff. Yeah, we can't list all the sponsors, but thumbs up to all the sponsors for con- you know their con- uh, contributing to the show. I uh, really appreciate that a lot. That's just, that's just huge, you know. When you see like the big companies um, wanna throw um, some gear your way, that's just always great, you know. And you guys, I mean, being there to go ahead and say, listen, we want to go and register for this. We wanna sign up for this or whatnot. Uh, you know, thank you guys. That was just absolutely wonderful. Like you said, 5,000 entries. That was really, really big. So anyways, back to the holidays. What'd you end up doing for, uh, for the holidays over there at uh, your house? Um, you know, we spend a, a nice, quiet family morning home. Um, mm. So we get to go through all our presents and the kids get to, to you know, have a good time. And then later right. in the afternoon, we head down to my parents and we have uh, dinner and a couple more uh, relatives come over and spend a nice day there. So that was all really good. Uh, Santa right. was pretty good to the kids. They got Mac minis this year for Christmas. Oh, nice. Yeah. So they're real excited about that. And, you know, some other uh, fun, fun little things, you know, but the right. Mac minis were like the big things. So yeah. they're, uh, they're, they're impatiently waiting for me to set up Minecraft on them right now. So <laughs> I, yeah. I got to get this done so I can uh, <laughs> go set Minecraft up Yeah, you can jump in there. Yeah, yeah, I actually, my son um, ended up uh, getting a laptop. He's seven so uh, he ended up getting a laptop this year and um, i did set up a minecraft server um so now we can actually play together for the first time he's like just ecstatic i can't tell you trevor he was just so so happy and my daughters they they got a lot of great stuff santa was really good santa's broke um you know the wallet is empty you know the then again down here in florida you know that's it's very hard for him to have a wallet in his back pocket because he's running around in a speedo right (laughs) it's like 95 degrees or something on christmas it was hot up here too i mean we had we had like over 60 degree weather up up to christmas like christmas day was a little bit cooler than what they had anticipated but right i mean it was like i mean that's unheard of normally we have cold weather you know maybe even snow up here for for christmas and you know oh bro i gotta tell you this was the scariest thing you know there was we were we were on my way on the way to my parents' house for for Christmas, and it right. was it was unseasonably warm, but it wasn't that warm. I mean, it wasn't eighty degrees. And I'm driving, and I turned onto this road, and I glanced out my window, and there was this this girl out there in little 
tiny clothes running around like a girl, right. you know, a young woman, not like a little right. kid running around in these little tiny clothes. I'm thinking, you've got to be kidding me. You're going to, you know, it's not that warm out, you know? Right, right, right. Now you because, guys down in Florida with 90 degree weather. I mean, yeah, that's, that's understandable, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It was just, it was just hot. It was just hot. I hate that. You know, when we go and get a Christmas tree and it's literally raining um, this year and muggy and gross and like probably even at night it was uh, in the eighties. Yeah, it's just, yeah. it's just not, it's not cool. Nah. So maybe we'll have to like recelebrate like right around January. January time. I don't know when, when it, it cools does down for you. Cool bit, down, yeah. you know, go cut down like a bush or something and stick. That's it. right. That's right. Yeah. So the holiday but bush. Yeah, that's good. So you know, uh, you know, Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to all you guys, and Happy Holidays. Um, yeah, whatever for sure. you celebrate. Yes. Hopefully you enjoyed uh, the family, had some downtime, were able to relax a little bit and not uh, work continuously. I mean, for me, um, I normally work on up to about the 23rd or so, and then I basically almost shut down till the 1st. Right. Um, I'll still work, but I'm at sitting at about 60, 70 percent. Um, it just that works out for me. It gives me that little bit of downtime right after the holidays kind of recoup from all of the madness. This year we didn't have a ton of people come over, which is good. You know, sometimes we'll have 12, 15, 20 people wow. in the house. This yeah, year it was house. basically, yeah, uh, we, you know, we had family. So it was uh, really good. We did do our family photo. Um, I tell you what, guys, this is the, the best thing that we ever did as a family. I started doing this family photo um, about four or five years ago, and it's always themed. My wife, uh, she's a licensed cosmetologist, so she does a lot of set design for me, and she also does a lot of hair, makeup, and all kinds of other stuff for actors, actresses, for models, and all the stuff that we do with, along with her own stuff. She does a lot of ad stuff for um, uh, TV and whatnot. So every year, we put together a Christmas card that is different. It's, it's eclectic, you know? One year it's like Chanel. The next year it's like this and that or whatever. We did a, uh, I'll throw one up. Matter of fact, you guys can see it right now, uh, this year's card. But we always do something different. And it's funny, family, friends, uh, you know, even the people that are at our uh, local printers, they always say, you know, where's the card? What where's are you guys card, doing this yeah. year? Like, it's, shh, it's super secret. I don't even know. My wife hasn't told me yet. I have to make it happen, but she has, uh, you know, in her mind. So, but it's the, it's the really cool thing. It's a fun thing because... It's a special card that's done every year and we always capture the kids. And um, it's that one, you know, that one card that everyone looks forward to. And as, you know, we know as photographers, we're like the shoemakers that go, you know, without shoes. For we're sure. the, you know, we're photographers and our kids never get shot, but yep. everyone else does. So by making that specific time, a special time to make that card and send it out to everybody and they know that it's going to happen, they're excited for it, is really, really great. It's something that, you know, if you guys don't do it, you really should it's uh it's really yeah, well special. it looks good i mean it's another i mean everybody knows you're a photographer everybody knows right. your wife you know does the the makeup and that she's involved in the creative business as well and right. and it is it's kind of like a an art piece almost that people look forward to seeing every year yeah. so yeah it is it is fun yeah yeah your your card came out good yeah we don't do that <laughs> yeah on, I, am Trevor. The, I am the photographer with you know with no pictures of of the kids of my own you know it's, yeah the uh, we we wound up going to uh, Great Adventure Six Flags here in New Jersey. Um, gotcha. This is the first year they do their um, holiday in the park, and they decorated the whole thing for for the holidays and Christmas, and I, it was just amazing. And they had this house set up with Santa, and uh, this Santa, I mean, man, they really went all out with this guy. I mean, he looks like the real deal. And uh, we got our kids' uh, picture taken with him, and they had this whole set. I mean, it's just beautiful, um, a fireplace and bookshelves, and it's very homey, very cottage feeling. Right. So, uh, so we had the picture done there, and uh, we got the rights to the digital image, so no copyright oh, violations. Thank you very much. Right. Yeah, and uh, we we made up a whole bunch of prints and sent those out in our Christmas cards. There you have it. Bam. Done. <laughs> done. Done. That's right. Yeah, that that works out. Yeah. That definitely works out. So, anyways, um, I guess we should get into the winner, right? Who yeah. won? People have really Who been won? been asking us online, and we do apologize. We've had the winner 
um, information for a little while now. We've just been, I've been busy. Obviously, Joe's been busy trying to do the holiday stuff, wrap up some business stuff, kind of take care of all the client duties before we, you know, take a little break for the holidays. And it's just been crazy. And we haven't been able to get a show out. Um, We have been putting a couple posts on Facebook. um, So if you guys have been following over there, you may have seen them. But we do have a winner for our 200th episode. And um, her name is Mandy Haberman, and she won all of the gear, $4,155 worth of photo gear. She is ecstatic. She said she never wins anything. She's thrilled, (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) which is completely awesome. She's a professional photographer. Um, Mainly what she does is uh, wedding photography, but she does dabble in portraits and some commercial work. And she also uh, sells some of her stuff over on a site called society6.com, which I'm not familiar with. But yeah, um, yeah. so that's really cool. I mean, we're really glad that it went to a photographer and not just somebody who enters contests. I mean, you see that all the time, you know. That's true. We'll have to throw up a portrait um, that she sent, uh, um, a headshot on the screen. Um, Yeah. And if you guys want to go and take a look at some of her work, you can go to Amanda Red Weddings right amanda red weddings.com um yep. so uh yeah congratulations to amanda that is a uh, a nice chunk four thousand dollars plus of gear that's arriving at the door that's right. <laughs> slowly as it trickles in from all the different um uh contributors so yeah, all the sponsors yeah. so it was really it, that was really good i know Once the again, contributors were all very pleased with the giveaway as well i mean oh my every God, yeah. Every contributor that we contacted and basically gave them Amanda's information to fulfill the the prize and everything, they were all very excited about it and very eager to do it again. So yeah, uh, so, stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, what that translates to you guys is that maybe we'll we're going to start doing some giveaways uh, more often yep. instead of an end of the year. We might do them, um, you know, every couple of months. So like like Trevor said, stay tuned. Yeah. Um, when when the sponsors are eager to give away. Um, uh, prizes. I mean, we love that. That's just that's oh, it's awesome. Great. That's just really, really great. And yeah, five thousand uh, people that uh, signed up. That was just absolutely fabulous. So, anyways, uh, before we go any further, we got to go ahead and take a quick break. But we'll be right back. Hang in there. The three in one photo reference tool is a versatile all in one color reference accessory designed to help you dial in white balance, exposure, and color temperature. With its 37 anti-reflective color reference tiles, both photographer and videographer can take complete control over their color workflow. The front side features 19 color tiles. The large 18% gray card with center target makes autofocus lockup easy while providing fast in-camera custom white balance and single-click color correction in post-production. The six-step exposure gradient provides perfect tonal reproduction, balancing highlights with deep, rich blacks in every image. Its 12 tiles of primary, processed, and standard skin tone colors are perfect for digital reference. On the back side of the 3-in-1 photo reference tool, you will find 18 custom tiles. Six-step exposure gradient, including an 18% gray tile, perfect for dialing in exposure and neutralizing color temperature in post-production. And finally, perfect for the portrait photographer, a unique 12-step gradient unlike any other color reference tool, allowing warming, cooling, and neutralizing color with a single click. From in-camera to post-production, the 3-in-1 photo reference tool helps push your creativity to the next level, providing complete color control over all your imaging creation. Grab one today from your local camera dealer or visit our website at jchristina.com. So we're looking at back in 2015 and we're, we're kind of looking at the technologies and the, you know, all the different news that came out and really what everything kind of circled around. And I, I think it's a pretty clear winner that 2015 was definitely the year of 4K video and mirrorless technology. Right. Um, they're really and drones, of course. And drones. drones I, mean, kinda, drones. I would say the drones carried over. Uh, drones from carried over year. from 2014 for sure. Yep. Yeah. You know, I, I've, obviously they're in the news all the time as well. Drones. I mean, yeah. it just at the consumer level. 
Um, you know, it's hitting the news about drones interfering with, you know, planes and this, that, and the other thing. So, I mean, they're going to continue to be in the news until they're regulated. And then you'll probably end up hearing yeah. less about them. Right. Um, but from a technology standpoint, you know, how it relates to the photographer, these were the two big things. I mean, yeah, you got the 4K TV, you have, you yeah. know, 4K um, on your DSLRs, 4K on your point and shoots, 4Ks on your 4K on your phone. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's 4K, 4K, 4K. Um, and then, you know, the at the mirrorless kind of just pushing forward. And especially on the Sony side, they've really, really done a big push um, for mirrorless, especially on a full frame side. So, yeah, that's yeah. like uh, that's been like the, uh, the 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 big things for this year. And we see it, um, you know, it's plain as day. Photo Plus Expo, for at, sure. uh, you know, WPPI, um, all of these shows, everything that's going on in the photo, you know, photo centric is all the same thing. It's all 4K, it's yeah. all mirrorless, and then new ways of using drones, new adapters to the drones, new yep. um, new software, new everything that has to do with the drones. So yeah, that was pretty much, that's that, you know, that's pretty much it. The question that I always, um, you know, what I take out of it is, you know, do, you know, should you care? Should you follow the technology? Do you need to be continuously looking at the technology? And right. it kind of, you know, leads into this patent that um, we saw that just came through. And um, the patent, I think it was not just days ago. I think it was towards the end of December. I think it was around the 21st, guys. And it was for a, um, a Cin lens, a cinema lens for the EOS. Um, and it shows that it would be for the C500. So it's like a brand new lens. So we know that they're coming out with a new lens. But what's really important here, guys, is it is 8K. So it is right. a patent for a cinema lens for the C500, right? That's 8K. So what does this mean? You know, we're back to the idea that, you know, everyone's out there doing 4K this, 4K that. They're selling their business on 4K. Yet, right. like, like we've said, um, literally like less than a month ago, uh, and we say it over and over, 4K is just 4K. It's just another thing. It's HDR. Don't jump on this bandwagon and just, you know, create, a, you know, your business around it because it won't be around very long. Don't no. chase the industry, you know, do what you do, do what you do best and just follow the industry. And you don't want to be caught behind the eight ball either, but you want to follow it in such a way that if it looks like you're going to make a considerable amount of money to move forward into the new technology, then do it. If not, you're going to move forward and you're going to make four or five grand, let's say, doing that, let's say on 4K. And then you find out that AK is going to cost you six grand to get into that. So was it right. worth it? You know, are you getting forward or should you have just done, you know, something else that's not so technology oriented? And we see that a lot. I mean, we see it, uh, you know, close to us. People constantly speaking about 4K and how photographers need to do 4K and they need to buy the 4K cameras and they need this. And, that. and it's like, well, you know, OK, but uh, bear in mind, 8K is literally, you know, a blink of an eye away. And here it is basically in patent form. You can see it. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, that. That really leads into a discussion that I want to have at the end here about technology. But um, I, I do agree, you know, that, you know, jumping on the latest technology, we say it all the time, you know, it, it's not really necessary because the technology is changing every day. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, and then that goes into the, the next one, the next, you know, let's say rumor or, or speculation for 2016 about the EOS 1DX Mark II. Right. Um, you know, I mean, here here's another, you know, flagship camera coming out from Canon. You know, it's going to be the latest and greatest, the hottest thing. It, it, this is going to have 4K, right? You know, because that's what they have to have, Digic 7, you know. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, they're, again, Canon, but Canon, you know, they're not, they have they have great technology. They have great equipment. But as far as innovation goes, I would not put them in the category of industry leader. You know, no. um, I would say probably at this point, I would say Sony is more of an industry leader as far as innovation goes. As far as, as far as innovation, leader. technology, and all that goes, Ab right. absolutely, absolutely. Right. I I agree a hundred percent. You know. Um, yeah, just you know, just recently I was able to review um, a unit from Sony, and that's the uh, Sony A7S II. 
um, their brand new full frame uh, mirrorless uh, camera. Right. And it was a very, very interesting, interesting uh, time with that camera. And, um, you know, the, the whole idea was not to review it as just another review, because you can find a hundred of them on YouTube, was to review it um, for you guys as, is this something that you should care about, you should be concerned about? Is this something that could replace your current DSLR heavy gear as a mirrorless um, camera? As a Canon shooter, as they've been saying, um, or proclaiming that Canon shooters can now strap on, you know, a Metabones adapter and be able to adapt all of their Canon um, lenses to it and still be able to have quick autofocus and everything functions. Yeah, professional. Um, status results. quo, yep. professional, right. Is that possible? That's really where I went down this um, review. And um, hopefully I'll have that out to you guys uh, next week. But uh, that's gonna that we'll 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 see. Um, but that was a very very interesting time. And like you said, you know, Canon, uh, they're they you know they're sitting I would say kind of on the on the fence with this mirrorless. They kind of dabbled with the um, what was it the M three. Um, did it do right. well? Not really. You know, now we're looking at um, you know them going into four K. Uh, with their with their main flagship, like for example the One DX and the Five D Mark IV, that's probably right. going to be coming out. Right, They're going to that's be rumored, hitting the 4K. Yeah, early Q two, I guess, right. in two thousand sixteen. Right. right, but like like we said, guys, it's like they're chasing their tail here. I mean, four K is over. By the time I mean, they get four K out, eight K is going to be the next thing. Exactly, and that's when Sony, who is now you know half an, a year, two years into you know their A7 line that is full frame mirrorless, yeah. they'll be sitting there full frame mirrorless on you know an 8K system, and yeah. once again, Canon will be chasing their tail to try to figure it out. Um, it's really interesting how this whole thing is playing out. Um, I, you know, we've always said, you know, in the photography industry, Canon and Icon are kind of like two legs on one body. One takes a step and then the other takes a step. The one takes a step and the other. And now, you know, Sony is becoming kind of like the third leg. No, I shouldn't say that, but yeah, kind of like the third leg. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, I mean, but, yeah, but listen, Trevor, it's a big fat leg. <laughs> yeah, I, I honestly, I think they're on another body. Because they yeah. really are, they really are more innovators, um, yeah. or more apt to take chance, to take yeah. some risks and put things out there that may not be the industry norm or what's right. accepted within the industry just yet. But they're really making great strides in the development of the technology. Now, that's not to say that Canon and Nikon aren't doing it on the back end. Um, right. You know, but they're just so much slower to get it out to market because, you know, they are the two 800 right. pound gorillas in the room. And if they go and botch up their product line, you know, because they're throwing stuff out there that may not be accepted within the industry yet, let alone <laughs> right. accepted from these two gorillas. Yeah. You know, that could be a problem. But Sony knows that their DSLR market is is good. They've got a solid quality um, base of DSLRs, but they know that Nikon and Canon are those big gorillas and it's going to be really hard to compete against them in yeah, that space. Yeah. So they said, you know what, let's focus our energy, let's focus our R&D and our money and our time on this mirrorless technology and let's make it awesome. And let's yeah. make an, ad let's get an adapter going so we can win over some of these Canon people. Because yeah, it's Canon's it's like nervous. leading from behind, right? It's like coming coming. It's easy right. to be the underdog and now be able to say, you know what? Screw it. We're gonna go straight mirrorless. We're gonna we're gonna you know you know bet the farm on mirrorless. We're gonna go down that road. We're gonna do full frame. We're gonna get people to. We're gonna get converts. We're gonna have people coming over from Canon, coming over from Nikon because our system is mirrorless. It's full frame. We can adapt all of um, their lenses to it. They can go right away. Um, buy a three thousand dollar body from us and be able to just keep on shooting just and just sell off their. Um, toilet paper, as I call it, which would be yep. their bodies that yep. aren't worth anything after a year or two. It's very easier. It's much easier for them to do that than like Canon or Nikon that have to kind of almost like status quo, you know, one, yeah. you know, one, one forward, next one forward. You know, Sigma did something like this with Fovian. I really thought they were going to really make it with the Fovian sensor yep. because Sigma was out there. They were doing amazing color, you know, having the three, you know, 
And what ended up happening, it kind of like petered out. You don't it's hear industry acceptance. About it. it was it yeah. was too too different of a technology for the masses to accept in right. and then again in the Sigma line. If that if Canon or Nikon had come out with that technology and kind of rolled it into one of their models, maybe it would have gained more traction. But people right. people really think of Sigma more <laughs> as um aftermarket lenses as opposed yeah. to the bodies and cannon body yeah like you know? the cannon body nikon body are one of the major um, right. major players so you know going forward with like we're talking about with the 4k we really do think that the new the 5d mark 4 will have 4k in it um, once again i you know we think that that's probably going to end up being like you know q2 q3 um, of 2016, but once again, behind the eight ball, um, they're gonna also go probably move their M3 line into like, let's say an M4, but you know, what are they gonna do different? They might throw in, you know, the Digic 7 because everything's gonna have Digic 7 um, at that point. But you know, where, where Canon keeps on falling short is their, um, their, their autofocus points. I mean, yeah. you know, they come up with like, you know, 19 autofocus points when everyone else is like 60. Yeah, um, you yeah, know, where yeah. that changes is where, for example, we talked at the beginning of the show um, um, or about the beginning of this, this segment about the uh, cinema stuff, right? Their cinema line. Right. You know, we had, you know, I used the uh, C100, which is the baby to the big daddy C500 um, when we shot uh, um, Innovation Now, right? Over on the other coast. And that is an amazing, I was like, I think it was like 169 points out of some crazy amount. The camera was just the video was amazing we were able to pull 4k stills out of it that looked just unfreaking believable right the yep. camera was amazing amazing but then they go and they put out you know uh, you know cameras that have you know just a minuscule amount of autofocus points i never could understand that nikon doesn't do that but canon no. for some reason they Canon's feel this urge some... you know yeah, Canon's got to have some reason behind it, whether they feel that the fewer autofocus points are better for the technology that they're using or yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know what their reasoning is. Behind it's very that. odd. Yeah, it is odd. It is odd. Yeah, and I'm, a, you know, I'm the focus guy and I think it's really, really important. I mean, if you don't get your focus right right? You just take your image, ball it up and throw it in the garbage. I don't care how good the image could have been or would yeah. have been. You're throwing it out. You get that perfect frame where the person looks the absolute best they can. It tells the story. Like I do branding portraiture. It brands them perfectly, right? right. And then you look at it and it's freaking blurry. And or the tip soft. of their, yeah. You know, yeah, the tip of their nose is crystal clear and you can see all like the little fuzz in their nose and their eyeballs are blurry. You could just ball it up. You just yeah. ruin the shot. So yeah, I just, I, I never, I just don't understand it. I really don't understand it. But who knows? Like you said, maybe there's a rhymed <laughs> reason for Yeah, I really would it. like I don't to know, know for sure. Yeah, so Nikon, they'll be coming out with new stuff too. I'm sure. I'm sure the, you know, from the D4, the D5 is probably right around the corner also. Cool picks will probably be new too. They'll throw in some new. I'm going to guess also the um the Nikon 1, right? They'll probably move forward um with that. Yeah. But they did have some news, right, on the mirrorless side um as of late uh, according to a patent, correct? Yeah, yeah, there's a patent for a 28 to 80 millimeter. Um it's an f 3.5 to 5.6. Uh, right. Full frame mirrorless lens, mm -hmm. which which is interesting. Um, so if the patent is applied for for the lens, obviously there's something in the works for the that body. They can use it, right? They can use the lens. Yeah, right? yeah. So, so if that's the case, Nikon will have a you know let's call it a full frame uh, mirrorless camera, just like Sony. That's yep. interesting. That is very very interesting. It's very interesting, right. and it's smart that mm -hmm. they get in this space with a quality product, seeing how they are one of the legs on the body here. I mean, if they yeah. can get, you know, if they can, you know, this is the trend. This is where things are moving into this mirrorless um, format. Right. I mean, if they can convert their DSLR owners who are ready to upgrade into a mirrorless body, because that's the new format and all the, the advantages of it, and they can utilize their existing lenses, that's huge. And this yeah. is what Canon really needs to do with their with their M line, and hopefully they'll they'll do something and really help come out with a quality product. Yeah, yeah. I just I, I don't know. It I I would venture to say you know Canon will not have a full frame um, 
a mirrorless camera in 2016. I would, I'm going to. It's going to be uh, another APS-C format. It will be. I'll, yeah. I'll probably, you know. It's too much of a drastic change. Yeah, I'll see 2017. And once again, they'll be two, three years behind Sony and probably a year, year and a half behind yep. Nikon at that point. I don't know. I, I really don't know. It doesn't. It doesn't look good. Not not when no. it comes to brand new technology. They need to ramp that up. I don't know. The guys over yep. there just. It's just kind of. It's just slowed down. It read. I think they they've petered. You know, they've just kind of petered everything down. They this. They slowed everything as far as innovation. It's just they're iterating. It's, right. You know, it's iteration right. instead of innovation. Um, they need to stop. They really do. So. Yeah. But, anyways, we really need to get out, don't we? Yeah, yeah, for sure. This one is, uh, you know, our last show of the year. So yeah. we want to wish everybody a happy New Year's. Um, be safe. Enjoy the time with the family. And we will be back again in 2016. Yeah, with the brand new show, right? 2016. Right. We will be, you know, we, we, we will be changing things, thing, you know, a few things up. I'm going to venture to say we always try to kind of, um, you know, innovate as well as iterate, right? That's right. And That's right. kind of change things a little bit as the years go, you know, as the years progress. You can see you go back to show, let's say, 50, and you take a look at what it looks like now at 200, 201 um, today. And there has been a lot of changes besides, yeah, no doubt. you know, our face <laughs> and what we look like. And uh, a few years you know, older. Yeah. A few years older, four and a half years later. So, um, <laughs> But yeah, like uh, like you said, you know, uh, happy holidays to everyone. Absolute best wishes. Um, enjoy the new year. Enjoy the family, which is the most important thing. And uh, get ready for a prosperous 2016, because I do think that 2016 is going to be a good one. Um, whereas 2015 was a little bit, I think, slow when it comes to um, the photography industry. But there's been a lot of flux going on, Trevor, a lot of flux. Yeah. People don't know where to go with it, and they're kind of hunting. So I think two, 2016 is looking pretty good. 2016 is the year to focus, the year to really zero in on what it is you want to do, You know what you want to be when you grow up, yeah. and, and really hit it hard and, and do it smart. You know, do the research, do your homework, go in it with a plan and be successful. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, man, we are out. So if people want to connect with you outside of the show, what's the best way for them to reach you? The best way, guys, is to find me on Twitter and that's at Joseph Christina and that's Christina without an H. Great, and you can connect with me on Twitter. It's at Trevor Curran. All right, everyone, we are out of here for yet another year. You can get all the show notes from this episode by visiting digitalphotographycafe.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash dphotocafe. And we'll see you next year. Take care, guys. You've been watching the Digital Photography Cafe show with Trevor Curran and Joseph Christina. Subscribe to our YouTube channel with any compatible device by visiting youtube.com forward slash dphotocafe. Be sure to subscribe to our audio feed through iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, and Xbox Music apps or through RSS. Visit digitalphotographycafe.com for show notes and to connect with your hosts.